<laughs> how do you, how does that make you feel that there has been an erosion of the teacher student relationship over the past you'd say maybe 50 years i'm not sure when it started but i've i've definitely experienced in that and now where yeah you're not allowed to hug your students or in Denmark, it was very strange because kids would come up and hug me all the time and I would look around and make sure that nobody was yeah. calling the cops or anything. And so what, how, yeah. do you, how do you feel about that? And especially as you mentioned at the beginning of this where there is a shortage of male teachers and I yeah. have a hypothesis for why that is, but I'll put that to the side for now and ask as a male role model for these kids and the, there's a little bit of an attack on the on masculinity in itself and the culture of masculinity and how how do you fill that vacuum for kids and give them a positive male role model while also operating under the guise of not being able to have somewhat emotionally intimate relationships with your students? Obviously yeah. emotion, maybe intimate's not the right word, but I'll, I'll let it stand. I think, yeah, especially like male masculinity is something that we've just been trying to de like debunk forever. And it's just like this big facade. It's like men don't have to be like big, gruff, all this crap. It's like, you're like, you're allowed to cry. You're allowed to be soft and gentle with the mm -hmm. kids. You're allowed to have those like heart to heart conversations. Like that's, that's who I am. And like, that's the men that I've had in my life. Like my dad is, I like, I see so much of my dad and myself now. And like my dad's a big, big big teddy bear it's like you think i'm a teddy bear it's like that guy's times five like <laughs> and like my grandpa and then my other grandpa who i never got to meet but like the stories you hear about him and like how he's just a good man and it's so soft and it's like yeah your dad's six seven but he's a teddy bear your grandpa was six six but he's a teddy bear and i'm like all right i'm six eight and i'm a teddy bear big costco teddy bears the plush ones exactly i'm like literally a life-size one but yeah <laughs> You know, like, I'm like, that's the thing, too. It's like, there's all these, like, rules and stuff. It's like, I'll give a kid a hug. If they're going to need a hug, sure. It's like, I'm your teacher. I'm, like, a staff in the building. It's like, hey, like, I miss it. Like, kids having a bad day. It's like, all right, come here. Give me a hug. Let's talk about it. Mm -hmm. It's like, hey, give me a high five, like a fist bump, whatever it is. Having a secret handshake with the kid. Like, just that stuff they enjoy. But it's like, that whole, like, facade of male masculinity is just, like, we're trying to unpack and unpack and unpack. And I think I can relate back to, like, athletics. Like, we like everyone's like like men and athletics are aggressive and they're all this is not and it's like you can it's it's like all right let's try to separate the person from the athlete my ego on the floor is i'm very chatty or like i play a, like a physical game i put like i'll chirp i'll do all this other stuff but then you flip me in the next next morning i'm in the classroom teaching kids and i'm this big soft guy that's singing the macarena or singing kumbaya to the kids like it's just the stark divide and people don't really see the flip of those two egos mm -hmm. i think especially males in elementary setting it's like you get males in elementary and you can look at them and you can like see how they interact you're like yep you're built for this like you know how to interact and build with kids and how to have that good positive relationship with them i think a lot of that might be also the integration of you could say that what people perceive as the toxic aspect of masculinity would be the aggression in males yeah. and the, exactly. the, the literature on antisocial behavior out of the, out of Richard Tremblay, he discusses the difference between male or male aggressiveness and female aggressiveness. So males and females express aggression differently from one another. And I think a part of the, toxic masculinity argument shouldn't necessarily be to completely quell any idea of being aggressive but to actually integrate that in so you have control over that rather than pretending that it doesn't exist because it it very much does if you go and look at our nearest non-human primate ancestors and the chimpanzees you'll you'll understand very quickly that aggression is built into us very deeply so i think it's a lot i, I think it's far more important to integrate that and teach kids that they have the potential to be little monsters and yeah. <laughs> it's, it's our responsibility to teach them how to know that they can be little monsters and make the conscious decision to not be little monsters. It's uh, something very cool that I found with Nietzsche in that the, what was the quote? It was the, I got, I got, I got to think about this hard. Um, <laughs> A, a bunny a bunny rabbit is not righteous 
but a wolf that knows that it could kill and chooses not to is righteous. So with the idea that, and I also think that people that don't think that they're aggressive and don't think that they have the capacity for malevolence are yeah. far more dangerous than people that know yeah. that they could potentially be malevolent and then they integrate that into themselves and choose not to be on a daily basis. I think that not knowing that you're capable of something allows for that thing to sneak up on you very quickly. Yeah. And then it's like, it's not a conscious effort. It's like, you don't know. It's like, you're like, you're always like, oh, in that conscious mind of like trying to withhold it and withhold it and withhold it. Mm -hmm. And that could be that one thing that just makes you snap. Yeah. But like on that topic of masking, I finally found, I was reading a book a couple of years ago. It kind of sparked it for me. It was, um, I'm going to plug the book here, Indigenous Men and Masculinities, Legacies, Identities, and Regeneration by Robert Alexander Innes and Kim Anderson. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yes. It was a book I read a couple of years ago. I saw it on like Amazon. I got it as a gift. And then I ended up using it for like a bunch of like university papers and it just like really hooked like me think being Métis and kind of like an indigenous background of like how can I be a better indigenous you know role model in elementary settings for students how can I debunk masculinity and all of these stereotypical archetypes that exist with being an indigenous man in Saskatchewan and all these national things that are going on in the world and how to be just a better servant leader in the classroom for kids and what did you find with that what was your experience that's Unbelievably fascinating. I'm gonna try to get that book as quickly. Yeah, I've got it from PA, but I gotta get it. I've, I've like pulled stuff for like different like educational philosophy classes. I just like just reading the like. I mean, you think of. I won't go too much like intergenerational trauma that's gone through like residential schools and all the things that have compounded over and over and over again on the Indigenous people of Canada, and how we have to continuously fight just like i'll nail on the head if you are an indigenous man you're more likely to end up incarcerated by a certain age it's a very high percentage um mm -hmm. alcoholism is very high as well as a statistic like there's so many burdens or holes or hoops you have to avoid and i think that's a thing like i think like one of the kids i teach are predominantly like first nations major students here in saskatchewan it's like I always that's something that's always been in my mind it's like these kids and myself you have to think of all these things that we're mitigating and trying to help kids avoid and help guide them in the right direction it's like they have all these things placed upon them that are from intergenerational trauma intergenerational trauma pardon me from colonization it's like all right here we are how do we help these students move forward in their academics and their life like it's there's so many pressures and burdens like it's just amazing to see what like how much people grow through all that.